We already learned about exception handling. Okay, let, let me read you a little bit about the exception handling. Whenever you have error, we are not sure what is the error. So we can see from this one, there are so many exceptions that has been defined by item. In this case, we have exception, attribute error, LFAC error, IO error, index error, key error, and so on. Okay, so we are not sure what are the errors when we do the So let's see, yeah, we already learned about this one. We have red, green, blue in list. And we know this is index zero, this is index one, this is index two. So if you want to get the index three, of course it is error. Because then we have only data from index zero, index one, and index two. So the error message will be index error. It means we have no index equals to so this index out of the so this is the definition by Python. instead of using this definition here yeah, you can create your own error method so let's say i'm using front so i'm going to access the index 10. is there any index 10? Of course, there is no index. So this is error. But I do not want to stop the program. I want to keep the program run. Then I would like to put the run. And then I know that this kind of error we have. And the type of error is in that so the except means i know that it will execute the index error if the index error happens next screen there is no index so here yes you can see the print is just a common print this is not error like this so the program can still run as we use it without stopping because of it. So in here you can just fix that. <coughs> now let's have another example. I think by now you already know about function. So we have step divide x comma one. I would like to put into the trial. As you know, try is a statement that might be an error. Why I put this one in the trial? Because sometimes people may give the wrong input for example people can give a number on this one and people can give zero on this so any number divided by zero is or not five it means there should be an error message in python they have zero division. Then if there is any input of zero on this file, we will give the accept. Accept is the L type, it is zero division. Point. And then I will bring division by zero. 
It means we will stop the program. Or we will just print what not stop, but we can give some exception. And then if this is not the case, we will print the result. What is the meaning by final? Finally, if you go to this, after this one, you will execute the final. If you select this one, after this, you will go to final. So it means finally it will be executed regardless except. Now let's see. If I run this. Now I would like to do the first one. Divide two comma one. What is the result? You can see that it will not execute this one because. We have one is a number in Y and two can be divided by one. So it means it is not an error. Then we will print the result. And yeah, it shows the result is 2.0. Finally, so we will execute this one. Executing finally. Now let's see if I have two comma zero. Is it possible for any number divided by zero? So the result is as you can see. Okay. When I put divide two comma zero zero here, so Two so divided by zero in this error. Or the error name is zero division error. Then I will print division by zero. And then I will not print this because yes, it's error. But I will print the last one, finally. I will print the finally, executing finally. So finally, will always be executed. But this except and this else, it depends on this thing. If it is error, then you will run except. If it is not error, you will run. So you can look at this one. There are so many exceptions. Uh, if you want to use it to create your own exception, uh, you can follow this one. An exception is thrown by executing the race statement. So you can make your own error not following the exception in Python. So it is an appropriate instance for an exception class as an argument that decides the problem. Okay, let's see. I want to give this code as an error. So let's say I want the user to give a positive number, but the user gives negative. So if the number is negative, I would like to say, sorry, no number below zero. So if x is less than zero, so I will put three. Race and then this is the exception. Exception means this is a class. 
This is a class of exception here. This is a class of exception. And I can define my own error message. So it is an error. And then the message is my own message. So this error message is defined by header. So let's see another example. Hello. So let's suppose I want the input is integer, but someone or the user gave the input free. Then I would like to give this kind of method. If not, if not, not if, if the condition is not true. So let's say this one type x is in. We know what is type. Type is to get the data type. X is hello, then Python will know that this will be true. And then we learn about is, is something to compare with the other side. So I want to know whether this data type is integer or not. But I have not, so I put the opposite. String is integer. Yeah, if not string is integer, then okay, I have the type error. Okay, the type error here also one of the exception. We have this type error. I will use this type error and then I define my own error message. Only integers are allowed. So yeah, we have the type error message, and then only integers are. So this is my own error message. So it means whenever you make a class later, you will learn about the object oriented. Whenever you make a function, you can make your own error message. So people can understand why my program doesn't. Iterator. What is iterator? <coughs> In the basic container type, we learn, we learn about the basic container type, like list, tuple, set. So we call this is container. Because in the place, we can see there are some elements. In tuple, okay, we have some elements. In the set, we also have some Element. So we call this container type. And this container type qualify as iterable types, iterator. So we want to have loop. We can go from one element to another element to another element. And so this is iterator. So which allow them to be used as an iterable object in a form group. An iterator is an object that manages an iteration through a series of values. So I can go one by one. I can go one by one and then do something. I can do checking. I can do something on app. 
if variable, let's say I, identify an iterator object, then it's called to the built-in function, or we call it next I, produce a subsequent element from the underlying theory. And we have the stop iteration exception to indicate that there are no further elements. An iterator in oh, sorry, an iterable object OBJ is this is the argument that produces an iterator via the syntax iter object. So let's see. You know that for every list, you can use this one for element in iterable. But I can use this too. Just for easy for understanding, I have C equal to one, three, and five. So I can use I as the object for the iteration, and I use iter. Iter means iterate. And what I want to do the iteration is the list of C. Now, I want to go to the next object. The first object is one. So I go one by one. After I know the next object is one, I want to go to the next one. What is the next one after one? It is three. After three, the next one is five. So it means I have to step by step. And then after five, what happened? If I do next I, it will be M. Stop iterating. It means there is no other element. Okay, so this is the internet. There is another thing in Python, we call it generator. Generators, the most convenient technique for creating iterators in Python is through the use of generator. A generator is implemented with a syntax that is very similar to a but instead of returning values, a yield statement is accepted to indicate its element of the series. So we learned before, whenever you create a function, you can return value. When you have a function, you can return. But in the state of return, we are going to use yield. So why do we use yield? So let's see this one. So I have a function factor and one argument n. So I would like to make an iteration from one until n plus one. If n remainder k equals to zero, then yield k. What does it mean? So n is any number that will be inserted by a user, let's say five. So I will like to do the loop from one until six. 
because n is part, so part. It means I will have number one, two, three, four, five. Now, for every of these elements, I would like to check n remainder k. So when k goes to one, it means five remainder one. Five remainder one is it zero? Five remainder one is zero. Five divided by one. Remainder Okay, any number divided by one is zero. So yes, yes, k. It means k will be same in the And then we will go to the next k. The next k is two. Five. Remainder two is zero. No. Then, because the condition is false, we go to the next one. And so on. If the condition is true, we will save the value in the in. Now let's see. I run this. Okay, let me just do this one. Now, let's suppose I have a factor 10. When I run factor 10, means I would like to put the n equals to 10. n equals to 10 here, and then it will run. But no result. Why? The result will be set in the so the generator is a kind of function in Python. In order to show the output of the generator, you cannot call the function function. So you need to make a variable, let's say v, and then call the function. Okay, so I will make b equals to factor 10, and then I would like to print the result of b. So i, which is the component of i for every b, and I would like to print it. Then the result will be 1, 2, 5, and 10. Okay, you can make this n. Okay, anyway. So once you run, I guess they go really strong, then there is no origin of that information. So in this case, yeah, we want to get the result from V. What is V? V is the result from this factor. Or we call it, this is a generator. So in order to print this generator, we need to put another loop to see what is the result from the yield. So if you run this one, then it means that 10 remainder 1. Okay, then it will be stated. 10 remainder 2 equals 0. Yes. Then we put 2. 10 remainder 3 equals 0. No. 10 remainder 4 equals to 0? No. 10 remainder 5 equals to 0? Yes. 10 remainder 6? No. 7? No. 8? 9? No. 10 remainder 10 equals to 0? Yes. That's why the dot is 1, 2, 5, and 10. So in Python, you can also get the 
conditional expression with sharp expression. So Python supports a conditional expression syntax that can replace a simple control structure. So the general syntax is an expression on a form like this, expression one, if condition, else expression two. This compound expression evolves to expression one if the condition is true, and otherwise evolves to expression two. For example, like I give n equals to minus five. Param, let's say this is a variable. I will give param value as n if n is greater or equal to 0 else minus what is the result of that in this case i have this This is not correct. Because this is not correct, then we will do L. What is the L? Yeah, minus N. Minus N means minus from minus 5. We will bring positive 5. Okay, so the result here is positive. Can see. The result is positive. It means this is a program to show a positive integer. Okay. Even though you give the input negative, but you want to be positive. We can also use this kind of short expression for the iteration on loop. Because this list comprehension. List comprehension offers a shorter syntax when you want to create a new list based on the values of an existing list. So this is the expression. The expression for value in internet form in the point. So let's say I have root this is a variable and this is a list because this is the square bracket. This is the square bracket. We have apple, banana, cherry, in main. Now I have a comprehension, a list comprehension. This is this is comprehension. So this is the expression x or value for every x in proof triple root. This is the root. In what is the condition? A in So I would like to know if any letter A appears in this character, then put that term in the Okay, one more time. It means I want to know in the new list any fruit with the character a in the type okay. so it means the result will be apple banana and mango because cherry and kiwi does not contain any 
character. Let's see. So the new list will be on the apple, banana, and mango. Because I want to include only X, where X is any element in the fruit, and I want to check whether the thing that I have is the X. So we got this is the comprehension thing. Okay, there are some slides more, so let's have a break. I will continue.